Hi there, and welcome to this video about Solid Thinking Compose. Today we're gonna take it all together. We take a look at step number 11, which is the full nervous stokes equation <clears throat> on a simple example, the cavity flow. Let's get right into it. We have step number 11 right over here, uh, which is a IPython notebook from uh, Lorena Barber. And it starts with this equation of the momentum. And as you can see here, v is not the velocity in y direction, but it's the whole velocity vector. So it is u, v, and w. But as we are solving it for a 2D case, we just have u and v. So we put this equation down to those two. So the u dt plus etc. And then we have to get a relationship between the pressure and the velocity. As already discussed in the last step, which was the Poisson equation, uh, there we tell that um, it's not so easy for an incompressible flow to get a relation between the pressure and the velocity, and you, you do that with this Poisson equation, and that's done right over here. So we have those three equations we have now to discretize and then to solve for the each um, corresponding values. So let's start with. Uh, the first equation. So the first equation is just uh, discretized forward in time and backward in space, like always. Uh, we have the same for the v momentum and the pressure. Um, we have um, we have no forward in time here, but like in the Poisson equation, we solve here for a pseudo time step, you could say. So we solve a, a certain number of time steps until it's converged. Um, yeah. So there's a problem here with the equation, so I switch over to step number 12. So just remember this for a second, we have here the, the Poisson equation discretized, and now we're solving that for um, let me see, let me see, here, um, we're solving that for P uh, with N and IJ. And this is this is the, the equation which is solved with this pseudo time step I, I talked earlier. And we have the u and uh, the v momentum, <clears throat> and there we solve for n plus 1. Which are those two equations, unfortunately, they're not displaying here on step number 11. But we can just switch over to number 12 and forget about this. And then they're, I think they're the same. All right, but um, if you want to get a deeper understanding on how this works, um, try to get them by hand each step, and um, then you get a um, clearer impression on what you're doing here. But but that that's really about it. You have those two equations, which are those two, without the f, and they're solved for uh, u n plus one and v n plus one, and we have the pressure equation which is solved for n. And yeah, then we have a, a set of boundary conditions. So as it is a cavity flow, we have defined a velocity at the top. So that is uh, y equals 2, that's the lid. And u is the x velocity, which is 1. We have the initial conditions are u, v, and p are 0 everywhere. And then we have u and v are 0 on the, on the boundaries. And we have the pressure gradient in y is zero at at the bottom, and the pressure is zero at y at the top. And we have the pressure gradient in x is zero for the outer walls. All right, now let's switch over to compose. Um, I like to start with rather down here, so because here's the main program. Um, Implemented, so you start with just um, setting verse. So you have your nx, ny, nt, and nit. That's the pseudo time step number um, set, and um, those are the initial values. But then let's just skip the functions for a moment and see what the main program does here. So we have our values for u, v, p, and b b is um, is um, part of the part of this equation um, 
of the Poisson equation, um, just to in, into the square brackets to make it uh, the implementation a little bit easier. But um, be careful, this row is included in here, so it's not quite the brackets, but you you can guess it what what it is. So we initialize um, those values, and then we have this main method cavity flow, where we input the time step, the initial velocities, time step, um, dx, dy, pre, row, and new. And now let's jump to this equation, cavity flow, it's right over here. And then we have our temporary arrays, which we are set like u and v, or un and vn, and b is also set in here. And for each n in range nt, so this is the calculation of of, uh, of the time steps in the real problem, we uh, do the, the well-known copy. And here we have two uh, separate subroutines. So first up, we build b. b is as said this term in the brackets. So this is another function, which is over here. And here it's just building up this, this function. And right after that, we have the cavity flow. We have after the build up B, we have the pressure Poisson function, which does the rest of the, of the Poisson equation. And this is right over here. So here we solve in this pseudo time step NIT for a number of, of uh, time steps, which we are set to be 50. Uh, I guess, and after that we s we assume this equation to be converged, and we are doing that and we uh, and returning p back into the cavity flow subroutine, and having p we can now finally solve our equations u and v, and as this is a loop, we're doing that multiple times. At the end of each loop, we also set the boundary equations to be those which are specified at. Um, right over here, which I talked about earlier. So returning back to the main program, we're doing that for a number of time steps, like 100 for the first time. And then we're plotting the result. Here we plotting both contour values and also with the quiver, we're plotting uh, the velocities u and v at each grid point. So the syntax here is that's x, that's y, and that's the direct, uh, that's the velocity in x, so u, and that's the velocity in y direction, so y. Eh, no, so v. And um, yeah, those. This will plot the the arrows, and then we're labeling the constraint, and finally show the plot. And we're doing this the, the same stuff like over here. We're doing that a separate time, uh, a second time. And in this case, we're doing it with 700 time steps, um, which is just a little bit longer to see what, what the change in uh, pressure and the change in velocity um, will show us. So if I just run it, we expect to have two plots. So the first plot is after 100 time steps, and the second one is after 700 time steps. So you can see how we, we defined at the top that the speed is is one and you see how the the flow is happening around here and if i put this to higher value we can expect that to increase to be a much more significant yeah you can see it right here all right, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching. If you have comments, questions, leave them down below. I'll happy to I'll be happy to to answer them. And yeah, thanks again for watching.